A lot of people worry about shipping off to basic training, right? What's it gonna be like? What are the drill sergeants gonna be like? One of the big ones is wondering if you're in good enough shape. And that's what I wanna kinda of talk about to give you an idea. I'm US Army veteran Christopher Chaos, and let's talk about how you can probably decide if you're in good enough shape before you ship off to Army basic training. What's up my friends, welcome to a brand new video. In this one, I wanna give you an idea, maybe some kind of milestones to aim for, some kind of, I guess, standards to kind of shoot for to kind of give you a good determination if you're going to be in good enough shape before you head off to army basic training because that's something to probably worry about right you don't want to be in horrible shape because if you are well it, it is going to make it a lot more challenging you don't want to you don't want to make it more challenging than it already is in some aspects so it's best to go into it in at least somewhat of a decent shape but what is decent shape for shipping off to basic training and even probably OSIT as well now, before we dive into things, you should definitely check out my website, ChristopherChaos.com. There's a lot of great resources for individuals looking to join the Army, people that are currently in the Army as well, as well as just all sorts of stuff like the shop and, you know, the merch and all sorts of other cool stuff. Check out ChristopherChaos.com. But right now, let's dive into trying to determine if you're in good enough shape to ship off to Army Basic Training or Army OSIT. The first one like we kind of talk about is probably the main one I usually like stress to people is a good cardio base. I mean, there's a lot more than cardio, but at a minimum, some good cardio, because if you can have good cardio, then it'll help you to be able to keep up with being smoked, with doing all the exercises and everything, because you have that cardio to have that good stamina to, you know, to keep up. You may not have the upper body strength or lower body strength just as well, but maybe you got good cardio that allows you to try your hardest and not tire out so easily maybe. You're gonna get whipped into shape in a basic training. You're gonna go into it maybe in good shape, maybe in bad shape, and they are gonna smoke the crap out of you, maybe depending on how frequently, you know, may determine how good of shape you get into, but they're gonna smoke you, you're gonna be doing regular PT in the mornings, all sorts of things that is going to probably get you into better shape than you were before you left, even if you were already in good shape. A lot of the determination of if you're going to be able to keep up is having a good cardio base, right? You may not be the strongest person, you know, you may not be able to do hundreds of push-ups or anything crazy wild like that, but if you got good cardio, then you can, you know, still try to keep up the best that you can and not get tired quite so easily. And some of the good ways to do that is doing things like running, road marches, all sorts of things that can do cardio, rowing machines, all sorts of things that build a good cardio base to help you not get tired quite as fast. With kind of the topic of running, I usually like to recommend that you should be able to run two miles fairly easily. It doesn't need to necessarily be like super fast, super speedy fast two miles, but you should be able to do a good gradual pace two miles without having to stop to catch your breath, without having to stop to walk and catch your breath, a good jogging, good basic pace of two miles. Now, if you can run fast, then great, right? But if you can just keep at least a decent pace and you know not have to stop to walk, you can do continuously two miles, that's a good kind of start, right? You're gonna to wanna to be able to do more than that when you get in the army, because in the army, when you do PT in the mornings, like on active duty, you're gonna probably be doing things like four miles, five miles, six miles, whatever the unit wants to do. Probably not very often gonna be doing as little as two miles. But as a baseline to kind of get things going, to get into shape and start getting into shape when you go off to basic training, if you can at least at a minimum run two miles without stopping, that's a good start and that'll at least be helpful. And then you'll get whipped into better shape in basic training because if you're going into basic training and you can only run maybe a mile without having to stop to, to rest or whatever, you're gonna probably struggle pretty rough in, in basic training. And you don't want that. You don't wanna be that person that's falling out of the runs that can't keep up because you can't even do one mile. Even if you can do two miles, but you have to stop to walk, you can't do it continuously. That's still gonna make things rough. So that's at least one of the good baselines to aim for is being able to do at least two miles without needing to stop to catch your breath. Now, there is additionally a physical fitness test that you'll do prior to even starting basic training. There's this fitness test you'll do in reception. Now, I'm not 100% sure if it's still the same standard or how they still do it currently, but even if it's something they don't do anymore, because maybe they've changed it because of, you know, after COVID or after, you know, introducing now the ACFT, the Army Combat Fitness Test, it's still a good baseline to aim for to be able to do this before you ship off, whether they do it still currently or if they've gotten rid of it completely. If they have gotten rid of it completely or they replaced it with something else, and I've got some viewers out there that have recently gone through Army Basic Training, let's say in 2021, 2022 timeframe, then let me know down below in the comments if this is something they still do or if they change it up and do something else or if they don't do it at all. But like I said, even if they don't do it at all, I think this is still a good standard to still aim for. Prior to shipping off, 
test yourself and make sure you can do this. The baseline I'm talking about is what they would call the one, one, and one, because it's one minute of push-ups, one minute of sit-ups, and a one mile run. Now, with the Army Combat Fitness Test, maybe they've gotten rid of it, but it's still a good baseline to make sure you're in some decent shape for, before you head off to basic training, because this was the test they would give soldiers, or maybe even still currently give soldiers, to make sure that they're in good enough shape to actually start basic training. And if they're not, then they would make them stay in reception for a little while, maybe build up a little bit of muscle, do some exercise, work out for a little while, so they could pass that and then they would allow them to start basic training because if you failed it then they deemed that you're not in good enough shape to even start basic training and we need to get you into shape to make sure that you're going to be successful hopefully so let me tell you about the one one and one what the standards are and it is different for men and women so let me give you the breakdown for both female and men for women it would be three push-ups in one minute 17 sit-ups in one minute and a one mile run in less than 10 minutes and 30 seconds for men, the standard would be 13 push-ups in one minute, 17 sit-ups in one minute, and a one mile run in less than eight minutes and 30 seconds. So testing yourself at home with those standards to make sure you can at least do that is a good baseline, right? You're gonna get whipped into shape in a base training, you're gonna get smoked, and hopefully by the end, you can do well beyond those minimum standards, but that was the baseline they would use to determine if you're in good enough shape to start basic training. And that's probably also a good, a good one to make sure that you can do probably beyond that before you start. And that's a good kind of, you know, understanding of how good am I gonna do? Am I gonna struggle in basic training or am I gonna have maybe a decent time because I went into it in decent shape? And that's kind of the baseline you can go off of to try to determine that if you're gonna struggle or if maybe you'll do okay. Now, if you can smoke that, you know, you can easily do two miles. Hell, you can do five miles, four miles, whatever, without needing to stop. Great, you're probably in great shape. If you can do well beyond that push-up, sit-up, and two-mile or one-mile run, then great. You probably will have no problem physically with basic training. But there's also mental things that are involved, but we're mainly focusing on the physical things. But it's still a good baseline of what to aim for physically. What is going to challenge you, right? Is it going to be the physical things because you're not in good shape or I'm going to be great physically and maybe it's going to be the, some of the mental stuff that's going to challenge you. Going into it, you know, with a good understanding of where you maybe stand is good. You don't want to show up there, hope for the best, and then it turns out, oh crap, I am not at all in good enough shape to be able to do this. I really slacked off and I shouldn't have been sitting on the couch watching TV and eating potato chips, you know, for the last several months before shipping off. Going into it in the best shape you possibly can makes things easier. But if you're not someone that maybe has that much time to get into amazing shape or whatever the circumstance is, you're getting ready to ship off pretty soon, you just wanna know, did I do enough? Then these are some good baselines to kind of aim for. If you're watching this video now, well, that means that when you go off to basic training at OSIT, you're gonna have to pass the Army Combat Fitness Test because the standard of when that went into place was soldiers that were going off to OSIT or basic training and would graduate after one October of 2022 were gonna have to pass the Army Combat Fitness Test in order to be able to graduate. And if you're watching this now, that means you are in that category and you will have to pass the Army Combat Fitness Test unless for some crazy reason, which I wouldn't doubt it, something happens just last minute, just before it goes into effect and they change their mind and extend it out farther or something. I wouldn't be surprised if this video is being watched like October now of 2022 and people are letting me know in the comments, oh, guess what, it did change, surprise. So just, just plan that you're gonna have to pass the Army Combat Fitness Test, okay? And if you're not sure what that involves and what the standards are for the Army Combat Fitness Test, well, luckily for you, I've got a video right here that you can check out that I explain everything as far as the standards, passing, all that kind of stuff. So check that out. Check out my links down in the description box down below for social media, for the Discord channel, ChristopherChaos.com. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching. Hit that thumbs up. I'm Christopher Chaos. I'll see you next time. See ya.